I'm sure you've been bombarded with a lot of phone calls, emails about how we can make you number one on Google. You're probably heard enough. Well, I want to make sure that you understand the right questions and the safeguards to make sure you're getting every penny's worth out of your SEO investment. So one of the most frequent questions people ask me is, how'd you get started in this business? Long story, as short as I possibly can make it, is I was fired six times in my 20s. I was too bossy to have a boss. I always knew more than everyone else did. Typical 20-year-old. But I just, after I think my sixth boss, and waiting for, I'll never forget, I, will, I would wait for weeks for social media to come out of legal, and the red tape of getting anything done would just drive me nuts. So by the time I last job was over, um, <laughs> my husband's like, maybe you should try that self-employment thing. So I was very, very lucky. The last job, literally on the last training I went to, I met one of the founders of Yahoo. And she and I completely hit it off. She hired me on the spot to do her training for her. And I, I was scared to death. I started traveling around the country with her. I was training million dollar advertisers for Yahoo. So people that spent a million dollars a month on paid search with Yahoo, and there's a lot of them at that time. Uh, so I would roll into a city, and I'd have all my notebooks, and I'd set up my room, and pretty much it was about punking, you know, let's go punk Yahoo. So I would get all these guys that were super smart, and they would roll in, and they would try to punk me, and I'm very competitive. So I was always like, I'm up for the, I'm up for the challenge. So through that meat grinder, um, I learned how to be a trainer and uh, subsequently built my business based on the referrals that I got from, from those people, which is great. I learned so much and it was like, it was 320 slides, I'll never forget. And every slide had, just about every slide had three points in a story. So I had to have that cold. And I'll never forget my final exam before I got hired by Yahoo. There was three or four of the executives. They were in the back of the room. I had to give my whole presentation and then I was scored. And ultimately I was able to pass that and uh, got hired by Yahoo to be a trainer. This is Gracie, by the way. What I saw was a huge amount of, of disservice to a lot of business owners. They wanted to be successful online, but they were incredibly intimidated by all the jargon, all the rhetoric, all the acronyms, all the Google algorithm conversations. And I was too, because I felt like they were the most underserved and also the ones that were taken advantage of the most. Um, these guys, these slick guys rolling in with all this fancy language and you wish you were as smart as I was and you should just pay us and just go away, let us do our job. And I got really, really tired of that. So when I started my agency, wrote my first book, Findability Formula, I wanted to create content that was accessible and helpful to people who were not nerds who didn't live to learn every line of the Google algorithm. People that really were just trying to get, do good work, take care of their families, put food on the table, you know, they're just, they're just working hard and they're just trying to market their business like anyone else. So I built Findability Group, which was my first agency. I had that for 10 years. Um, we were a full service um, internet marketing company, paid search, social, SEO. Uh, I sold that when I had 16 employees uh, in my 30s, I had something to prove. I wanted a sign on the side of the building. And when I finally got the sign on the side of the building, um, it was taking a toll on me. Uh, I was traveling a lot. Um, uh, I had a lot of health problems from all the stress. And I finally decided that it was time for me to sell the agency. So I sold the agency, and that's when I, but that's when I uh, founded Findability University. And my whole tagline is empowering businesses to dominate online, meaning pull back the curtain, show them how things really work, how people think, and understand that through data. So business owners can understand data and then interpret that data to create content that's meaningful, that connects and converts. And that's been my mission ever since I sold my agency. And why I've written my last two books is because I want to empower businesses to do this themselves. And I always had a vision for what I wanted to do. I wanted to have retreats. And I wanted to have them in amazing locations. Everyone, we call them workations. You know, everyone got to come work really hard and then maybe play a little hard. Because I, I, I don't work a nine to five. Um, you know, I travel around the country. I work everywhere that I travel. Um, I work from home. 
I work with clients, so I don't have a traditional lifestyle by any means. You know, and I like it, I like it that way. So if I'm gonna architect my own business, I'm gonna do it my way. And my way was about making it easy, making it accessible, and making it fun. And that's why I get out of bed every morning because I get really jazzed when I see other business owners see the light bulb go off. And they're like, okay, how come no one's ever explained it to me like this? I love hearing that because that means they really, they connected with the content, they had a good time doing it, and hopefully it takes their businesses to a, a whole new level through an online, online searches and being able to really finally take ownership of their own marketing online. When I left Yahoo Search Marketing, I was convinced that I was a trainer. And I was a trainer. It was hardcore, you shush, I, t I talk, you take notes, you leave. There was no interaction. So when I sold my agency, I decided that I want to be a professional speaker. And I thought, well, that's like a Tony Robbins, right? And I wanted to be a speaker who could help businesses transform. And what I learned very quickly is I was not a speaker, I was a trainer. And a spe a speaking, being a speaker is a much different lifestyle than being a trainer. So I joined the National Speakers Association and that was hugely transformative to my life because I was able to understand what it meant to get audience interaction, to get audience participation, to get them doing the work. So about five years ago when I sold my agency, I decided to put people behind the laptops and let them have their own journey. And that's what I do now is I, I through private coaching and through retreats and training, you know, I want people to feel empowered that they can do this themselves. And as a professional speaker, I thought I have to roll in like Tony Robbins. And what I didn't realize was that it wasn't about being a celebrity from stage. That was not, it was not congruent for me. It was about me empowering people through my speaking to do it themselves. And for a long time, I didn't really think that I could do it. I didn't think I could give the power back to the audience because I was always so used to being in charge in front of an audience, look how smart I am. And I decided that it wasn't about how smart I was, it was about how smart they were. And that was a big turning point in my career where I feel like I finally could understand how to pivot from highly technical topics to something that makes it accessible and fun. I was on Oprah twice. Uh, I, was, I got recruited by Tony Robbins. I did seven international events because he, his booker searched for easy, non-technical SEO, and they found me, go figure. And I got all these great opportunities. And, and as I went through this, the seven international gigs with Tony, and uh, I, I realized that that was not who I was. I realized that being a keynoter was not what I wanted to do. It was very glamorous, but it, it felt very soulless to me. And so the reason that I built Findability University is because I wanted to access and reach someone. I wanted to see if being a professional speaker was really what I wanted to do. And it turns out it's kind of a hybrid between speaking and training. So the evolution of findability.com is very interesting because it started off as, of course, Flanagan Graphic Design. That was my first business. My second business was WebArts which was a website design company. Then my third business was Findability Group, and that was my agency. And now it's Findability University. Now, I had Heather Lutze for a long time, but Heather Lutz is a reality television star. And so I didn't want that. I own that domain, Heather Lutz, without the E. My name is Heather Lutze with the E. So I, I realized pretty quickly that I wasn't a professional speaker. I didn't want to be a celebrity, so I, went ahead and switched to findability.com. Now what's interesting is that before the recession, findability.com was a $200,000 domain. And the guy who was selling it wanted $200,000 for it. Well, I was not going to spend that kind of money. Then after the recession, the number got a whole lot nicer, like around $4,000. So I finally was able to secure findability.com as my domain. And that was a big turning point in the evolution of my business and my domain because now I was really leading with not only an industry expression that was being commonly used, but also a way to think about SEO differently. And I still to this day hate the word SEO because I think it's riddled with misunderstanding, it's riddled with snake oil, shysters really, who roll in with all this fancy knowledge and all these technical terms and overwhelm the business owner to such a point that they just write a check 
And I think the reason that the average turnover rate with SEO companies is about a year, because I think that ultimately there's only so long a business owner will wait to see results. And then they're gonna try it again, and again, and again. And I find that once a business owner decides that they're gonna be fully invested in how they're findable online, that's, that's really where the money shows up. It's where their thought leadership shows up. And ultimately, it's, it's how you bring real profitability to an online presence. At Findability University, we are not an SEO agency. We are the un-agency. We feel very strongly about empowering you, your marketing teams, no matter what your size, no matter what your budget, helping you to finally access what people really want. So think about human nature through data. If we could connect, I can show you the tools that are gonna get you connected with that data. Then we can carefully craft content, social media, videos, based on what people really want, their heartbeat, as opposed to how we wanna put ourselves out into the world. That's real findability, and that's why I do what I do every day. Man, I love SEO. I hope you're geeking out with me too. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button so that you get notified every day of easy, non-technical tips and tricks to make you the most findable business online.